Hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name Christ Darkness seems to 
accused in an absence of love. My sin washed away in your blood. Too much to make sense of it all. I know that your love breaks my fall. The scandal of grace, you died in my place. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Am I on yet? Not yet. If I were Pastor Anthony, you would hear me. <laughs> there I am, hurting myself breathe. Good morning and welcome. I met you out in the entryway yesterday. Yes, welcome. So glad to see you and your wife here this morning. Um, well, today is Sunday, so guess what that means? Woohoo! We get to worship the Lord. Woohoo! We get to worship Him every day. But today, we get to come together as a group, like believers, and worship our Father in heaven. I want to make a couple announcements. And one of them is Pastor Anthony and a couple of the other men are gone this weekend, so we have a guest pastor. But uh, we also know that Pastor Anthony is on his way. They're actually leaving Wichita Falls and headed towards home now. So throughout the day, if you wouldn't mind praying for them, that would be awesome for safe travels to get here, that there would be no uh, unexpected 
uh, incidents or anything, that they just have a glorious time coming home. I also want to remind you that next Sunday is the first Sunday of the month. So what does that mean? Potluck. Exactly. No theme for next week. It's just potluck. So bring what you want to bring. If you want to participate, or you don't have to bring anything, you could just participate. Um, another one is yesterday. How many of you ladies were here for Friday and Saturday? Stand up. If you were here Friday and Saturday, stand up. That's okay. Saturday too. If you were here over the weekend, stand up. Ladies, did you enjoy it? Oh, come on. If you want people to come next year, did yeah, you enjoy it? It was awesome. Thank you, Cicely, for putting that together. It was awesome. And thank you all who actually brought food and um, just participated. It was so awesome. Next year, mark your calendars. I'm going to tell you now, March 1st. It is called Gathering 25, and they're going to do a whole global. It's going to be live globally. We're shooting for the convention center because we want all the churches to come together. So anyway, we're going to we're going to open up with prayer. So go ahead and stand up, and um, I want to let you know that Kelsey's birthday is coming up at the end of the month of March. He told me not to put it I'm on the sure calendar. I'm not sure why this is being announced right now, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yeah, gifts? We're, we're prepping him for 40. I do like gifts. So. <laughs> also, I want to let you know that uh, we have Scott, Pastor Scott Pointer. This is Shaylee's dad, and he's going to be preaching this morning. So um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so very much for this day, Lord. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you for the gift of him dying on the cross for us so that we may have eternal life with you. Father, I pray for our pastor Anthony and the men as they're traveling home, Lord. Father, I just ask for safe travels for them. I pray that they will see you everywhere they look today. I pray, Lord, that wherever they stop that they are able to share the goodness of your love and your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness that you give us. Father, I just thank you so very much. And as we come here this morning to worship you, may our voices be lifted high. In Jesus' name, amen. And for those of you looking up here, see a lady that you've never seen, this is also Shaylee's sister, Cassie. She's going to join us today. So, All right, I'm going to ask for a little participation this morning. Put your hand together with Andy there. All right, let's go. Sing it. Remember those walls that we called sin and shame. They were like prisons we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those walls are rubble now keep those hands going this morning remember remember those giants we call death and grave they were like mountains we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those giants are dead now and we're gonna sing this is our god and this is our god this is who he is he loves us this is our god this is what he does he saves us he pulled the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god King Jesus. Remember. 
Remember that fear that took our breath away A faith so weak that we could barely pray But he heard every word, every whisper And now those altars in the wilderness Tell the story of his faithfulness Never once did he fail and he never will and they say this is our god this is who he is he loves us this is our god this is what he does he saves us he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god King Jesus. All right, and you sing this with me. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sins? Nobody but Jesus. Who pulled me out of that pit? He did, he did. Who paid for all of our sins? nobody but Jesus who rescued who rescued me from that grave Yahweh Yahweh who gets the glory and praise nobody but Jesus who rescued me from that grave Yahweh Yahweh who gets the glory and praise nobody but him this is our God this is who he is he loves us this is our god this is what he does he saves us he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god king jesus he bore he bore the cross beat the grave let heaven and earth proclaim this is our god King Jesus All right, sing this with me. I have tasted, I have seen the realness of your love for me. And it's written on your hands and feet. And it's all the evidence I'll ever need. Sing this out. Your love is better than life. I can't even wrap my mind around it One day here in your house Better than I'm We're going to sing running, running Make love keeps on running Running keeps on running after me Keeps on running Running keeps on running after me yeah. There's no one no one that can take your place and there's nothing that there's nothing that can separate no oh how high how wide how deep the greatest love this world has ever seen and we're gonna sing your love your love is better than life i can't even wrap my mind around it one day here in your house better than a thousand elsewhere your love keeps on running running keeps on running after me oh keeps on running running keeps on running i sing running run run running run run running run running run 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 after me run run running run run running run sing that again run run running run run running run run running after me run run running run run running run run running after 
to me all right and we sing this surely goodness and mercy will follow me sing that out surely goodness and mercy will follow me surely goodness and mercy will follow me every time i turn around surely goodness and mercy will follow me every time i sing again surely goodness and mercy will follow me every time i turn around surely goodness and mercy will follow me every your love your love is better than life I can't even wrap my mind around it. One day, here in your house, better than a thousand elsewhere, your love keeps on running, running, keeps on running after me. Oh, keeps on running, running, keeps on. Every voice, let's sing it. Your love, your love is better than life. I can't even wrap my mind. Y'all take it off. One. Yell it out, your love keeps on. Your love keeps on running, running. One last time, let me hear you sing it out. Your love, your love is better than life. One day, one day. Here in your house, let me hear you sing it. Your love keeps on. Keeps on running, running, keeps on running after me. Man, that's a, that's a good thing, right? Because we don't deserve that, do we? God's love is good. again through the car
together. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, the name Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever save. He's worthy. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Ah, we live for you. And we sing, holy, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. and we build our lives on Christ. So we're going to sing that because He is the firm foundation. We put our trust in Him. Know that it will not be shaken. Let's hear it. I will build my life upon Your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone and i will let's sing that again y'all lift it up only voices i will
will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me i want to sing that one last time i will build my life let me hear every voice sing lift it up make this your prayer and I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. One last time. Let me hear you. Make this your prayer. Sing it like you meant it. I It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken. Father, yes, we put our lives in your hands. Lord, we place all our trust in you, knowing that you will never fail. God, we're so thankful that that we worship a God who never fails, who's consistent, constant, uh, through the trials and through the storms and through everything that life can throw at us, through everything the world's telling us we need to be or everything the world's telling us to chase, Lord. You are better, you are more fulfilling, and you are satisfying. So, Lord, we just place our lives in your hands. We place all our trust. We, we, we surrender our lives and we follow as hard as we can after you, Lord. Lord, would you speak this morning? Would you move in our hearts and make them open to hear your word? But not just be hearers of the word, be doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All righty. How's everybody doing? What a great worship service. Thank y'all. Thank you very much. Welcome. If, if you're a guest, I'm a guest here today, so I want to welcome all the guests. Uh, just relax. We're going to have a good time. We're going to try to learn something that we can take out of here and use out in our daily lives. How about that? So welcome, everybody, and thanks for having us. This is my wife, Becky, right here, by the way. Y'all would do good to have her up here. But it's great to be here. But I do have to admit, my whole life, as my grandson would say, my whole entire life, my entire life, I have, anytime we go on a mission trip, 
anytime I would come to Rio Dosa with my family, which was only once. But every time I crossed the border, the Red River, the border out here, going to Louisiana or maybe Mexico on a mission trip, when I leave Texas, I always get some kind of sinking feeling in me. I, <laughs> did any of you Texans ever get that besides me? I just like a little bit of a, a sinking feeling. But, however, the good news is I now have two daughters living out here in New Mexico, two grandkids, two son-in-laws. That's even good. <laughs> and it's starting to feel more like home out here. But even better than that, they both have wonderful, loving, caring church families. And that's a real big deal to a mom and daddy back home. So, and a grandma and grandpa. So, congratulations on that. And uh, I still like to see that Texas sign. Don't get me wrong when I'm, when I'm heading home. <laughs> I still like to see that. Kelsey informed me that uh, Pastor Anthony has started the series in 1 John. And I said, perfect. That's, that's like my... The number one message I would want to speak to any church right now in the time of where we're, we are at and where I'm at, I think it would come from 1 John. And um, I'm talking about any church, a small church, a big church, a struggling church, a church that is on the ball. This is the n number one message I would like to preach. So turn in your Bibles to 1 John. And we're going to focus on 3.18. 1 John 3.18. And I would ask you all to stand for the reading of the word. You're going to hear this verse probably five times today. Dear children, let's not merely say we love each other. Let us show it by the truth of our actions. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, thank you for these people. Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you for the wonderful prayer we got to be a part of before the service. Lord, just, it's a blessing to be in your house. And Lord, my desire, I know is your desire, that we would leave here knowing you more and being a, being a little bit more like your son, Jesus Christ. And it's, it's his name we pray. Amen. Shaley's been telling us all about y'all. This is our third time to be in a service here. And we've been watching y'all online, even back when Pastor Allen was here. We've been watching Anthony preach. We've been watching everything happen from afar. So now I'm on this side of the camera, and it, it's a really good feeling. But I know that y'all are already a loving, caring church, and we thank you for that. But I also know that any church can grow, any individual can grow and become more and more like Christ. So we're going we're gonna to learn a little bit about loving on people and loving on God. Does that sound good? Yeah. That's pretty easy too, isn't it? <laughs> but we've seen it firsthand. So today's message is not, I didn't come here to try to uh, get y'all to go on and and fix some problems or anything like that because we know y'all already have it going on. So this is a pep talk today. I, I'm, I came here to encourage y'all, okay? And y'all are a, a, an encouragement to me. So the main verse is 1 John 3, 18. I'm going to read it again. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. I've, I've been, uh, this has been a favorite verse of mine for a long time. You know, love is an action word, right? Especially right here. Love is an action word. You got you to gotta put it to action. You know, we all say, I love you, and we feel I love you. But you actually got to put the rubber to the road, so to speak. So that's what we're going to do. But before we dive into loving one another, because this main verse focuses on loving each other. This is your brothers and sisters in Christ specifically your local church family. That's what this is about. 
But before we get into that, let's look at a, a couple of other people groups or categories that Jesus commanded us to love. And you can follow along and take notes in your bulletin on all these. But love our enemies. Turn to Matthew 5. 43 and 44. Now, Shavy said, y'all like turning in the Bible and, and getting there. So I'm going to have y'all doing that a little bit, but some of them are up on the screen too. And feel free to use your phone or whatever you have. Love our enemies. Let me get on the right page. Y'all probably beat me. This is Jesus on the Sermon on the Mount talking. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor. And hate your enemy. But I say love your enemies. And pray for those who persecute you. You know when I was a kid. And I. Going to Sunday school. And anytime I'd read this myself. Love your enemies. To be honest I always thought of Vietnam. Those commies over there. Across the other side of the world. Now, I got to love them Lord. I, I can do it. But Really. What it's really talking about, this plays out in our everyday lives with people we come in contact with every day, and just, it's real life. So, I have a story from an old pastor friend of mine that he, he told this, uh, this story that really happened to him probably 30 years ago when he told it to me. I call it the apple story, and I think... The reason I thought of this, or the Lord put it on my heart, is we come up here and go with shaving Kelsey to the apple fair and stuff like that, and I know y'all raise apples up here. But this is an apple story, and this pastor's name was Peter Lord. Some of y'all may know him, but I got to become a friend with him. So uh, what happened was he was about my age, and his doctor said, you need to start eating some apples and, and eating well. And he said, I like apples anyway. This is a, an easy assignment. And he had been going around his community. And he found, he found his favorite fruit stand on the side of the road where he would go get, go get his apple. He'd been there one time before, and there was a sweet lady, an elderly lady. And um, lots of people out in the community. Just There was all kinds of fruit at this fruit stand. And he'd gotten an apple there, and he... Loved it. So the next time he got a urge, we call it a hankering in Texas, he got a hankering for an apple. So he went to the fruit stand. He picked out his apple. And, you know, as a pastor, he'd like to, he also would spend time walking around just noticing people, listening to people. So he got his apple and he paid for it with a sweet old lady and he's walking around and he took a big bite out of it and everything's going great. And the lady's husband came out and cussed him up one side and down the other and berated him in front of all these lovely people that he was trying to be a witness to. And he just wouldn't let go. He said, how could, how could you blankety blank eat, steal my apples? He thought he stole his apple. Evidently, he had uh, had trouble with people stealing from him. So he jumped on this pastor and um, it, it, it embarrassed, embarrassed him bad. It don't matter who you are, who you are in the Lord, how mature you are, it, it got him pretty good. And the guy just went crazy on him, and his wife had to actually start jerking on his arm. They, and he finally you know, got him out of his rage. She said, honey, he already paid for the apple. And oh, oh I'm starting to get, I got to watch my grumpy old man. This, I'm, I'm 62, so... But he just, he didn't. He kept going on. So the pastor usually would like to resolve it. And he just had to leave with kind of his tail tucked between his legs. So he, it kind of devastated him. He, was, he had all these feelings about it and everything. What, you know, it was just horrible, Lord. But a couple of days later, he had another feeling. He said, I'm getting hungry for my next apple. Where, am I, where am I going to get my next apple? And 
He said, as soon as those, that thought crossed my mind, the Holy Spirit said, you got to go back. Y- y'all have had that, hadn't you? You got to go back. And um, he did that. He said, the, it, it was hard for him to go back. It was, um, y'all know how hard it is. But you also know the power of God, right? And this pastor knew the power of God. And he knew. And Shaley said, they said this in y'all's women's conference. One of the ladies said, hurting people hurt people. Right? She also said, healed people heal people. But hurting people. The pastor knew this. Matter of fact, he taught many lessons on hurting people hurt people. So he said, I'll go back. So he went back. Got him an apple. And the old guy's... The, lady, the lady's so sweet, and the old guy's like, he's really despondent. He went back every second or third day whenever he got that hankering for that apple. He kept going back and back. Finally, about six weeks later, the old man came up to him and apologized. He said, I was way out of line. I can't believe I did that. I wish you'd forgive me. Will you forgive me? He said, sir, I forgave you before I ever came back the next time. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. He said, kept going back and getting his apples just a couple more weeks, and the, the man and his wife showed up at church where he preached. A few weeks later, they accepted Jesus. They believed in Jesus, and they received him, and they were born again. And they went to that church for the rest of their life. That's a, that's a story we all, we all come across. I mean, this, this pastor was having a perfect day and a perfect life, and all of a sudden he got bumped, and he responded in the right way. And we have to respond in the right way. So let's reread Matthew 5, but we're going to go 43 through 47. You have heard that the law says, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Praise for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and unjust alike. If you, only, if you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. Again, real faith is lived out in real life. We can pray for our enemies overseas or our political enemies or, or in that too, but it's lived out in real life with real people, okay? And we're citizens of heaven now, right? We are citizens of heaven. But we got to go back. We got to go back. Sometimes it's not a fruit stand, it's our job, it's a school, and it's hard to face. But the Bible says, specifically in John 15 7, when our heart's desires align with God's will, when our ways are God's ways, and we have his power, we can go back into any situation. We can can do it just like he did in any of us. Verse 7 in John 15 says, But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Is that true? It's in the Bible. Is is that really true? The version I learned, it, it says, You can ask for anything you wish for. And it will be done for you. It's not like, I don't think it's God's will for you to have a yacht. Or I would like to have a big ranch in between here and Mineral Oils, Texas. (laughs) It might be. I would sure like to love on a lot of wayward teenagers and stuff. But you know what I mean. When our will aligns with, when our ways are his ways, we can ask, he'll give you the power to get back up there and do it, to go back out there and face it. You know, you could be like, he's going to hit me. 
I don't, I don't mind being hit by him. I don't mind being cussed out by him. But it's humiliating in front of all the people of the town. But you got to go back. So, love your enemies. Next, love your neighbor. Second point. And you can go ahead and turn to 10. Luke 10, 25 to 37. Because I know y'all like doing it so much. Love her neighbor. Again, when I was a kid, I thought it was my next door neighbor or the one across the street. I'm like, check, check. Uh, that one, too, over there across the street. Oh, oh, I'll do it. But Jesus has, this is, this is a story from Jesus about loving your neighbor, okay? And I'm going to read the whole thing to you, and it's a good story, and it won't take long. The most important commandment. One day an expert in religious law stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. Teacher, what should I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus replied, what does the law of Moses say? How do you read it? The man answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. Right, Jesus said. Do this and you will live. You know that's impossible without the blood of Christ. We can't do it, but he was going along with this guy here. And uh, the man wanted to justify his action, so he asked Jesus, And who's my neighbor? What he, what he really did was kind of like most of we put that in a box and, and narrow it down. Who's my neighbor? So Jesus replied with a story, the parable of the Good Samaritan. A Jewish man was traveling from Jerusalem down to Jericho, and he was attacked by bandits. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him up, and left him half dead beside the road. By chance, a priest came along. Hey, this guy's in luck. Right off the bat, a pastor comes by. A priest came along, but when he saw the man lying there, he crossed to the other side of the road and passed him by. A temple assistant, or your Bibles might say a Levite, he walked over and looked at him lying there, a little more interested, but, but he also passed by on the other side. And this is one of theirs. This is a Jewish man in the ditch. They're Jews. <laughs> and then a despised Samaritan came along. You know, Jews hated Samaritans and Samaritans hated Jews. For, for, for centuries they called them, the Jews called the Samaritans half-breed. They, they, you know, they, they, were, they, were not, they were half Jew and half Assyrian descent. So these two, didn't, these two groups did not get along. Okay? So going over to him, the Samaritans sued his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged them. He put the man on his donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day he handed the innkeeper two silver coins telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay the next time I'm here. Then Jesus said back to the man, now which one of these three would you say was a neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? And the man replied, the one who showed him mercy. Then Jesus said, now go and do the same. Wow, what a story. So who are our neighbors? Jesus said, love your neighbor. In the Old Testament, in the law, it said, love your neighbor. Our neighbors are whoever we're a neighbor to. Whoever we have compassion for. Whoever we show mercy to. Now, maybe there's a certain people group in your life that you just can't stand. And you might have a good reason for it. Maybe you've been persecuted and mistreated by a certain people your, your whole life. And you can't stand them or you, have, you can't face them or you don't, want, you don't love them. What are you going to do? This despised Samaritan 
had every reason to have a victim mentality. That's a big word nowadays, victim mentality. That's going around a lot. He had every reason to have one. He had every excuse under the sun not to render aid to this Jewish man. Instead, he felt compassion on him. That's what the Bible says. He felt compassion for him. And he just couldn't pass him by. Next time that comes up and Can you pass him by? Who's your neighbor? I, I, I went over who's your, love your enemy and love your neighbor because love one another is the next point. And this is the main point. And this is what we call keeping the main thing the main thing. So love your enemies. Love your neighbor. Love one another. Y'all look around. Look around at each other. Nobody looked. You don't have to, just take a glance. <laughs> the main thing, and, and the next point is love God. Love one another and love God. Jesus takes it up a notch here. This is set apart from the other two loves, okay? He takes it up a notch. Back to the main Bible verse, and I'll include 19 in this, but back to, I'm supposed to be in 1 John for this sermon series. <laughs> Verse 18, 1 John 3. Dear brothers, dear children, let's not merely say we love each other. Let us show the truth by our actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth, so we will be confident when we stand before God. Amen. Like I said, I, this is, I'm a hired gun today. I really don't even know if I'm a hired gun. <laughs> but I, I just have one bullet. Okay, I got one sermon I can give you, and this is the one I've, I've chosen. I, I, just, I, I know it'll make a difference in your lives. So. If a church can get this scripture down and can master the art of loving one another, you would have to board up and nail the door shut from the inside to keep people out. It's the truth. The fire marshal would be down here all the time saying, I told you a thousand is the top. You cannot put more than a thousand people in this. And you would have, some of you guys out there are probably builders like me, and you're already thinking, well, you know, where, which, where do we bust out at? Do we just take over Albertsons? But when you, God does stuff like that, doesn't he? He does stuff like that. But whenever you really put your heart and soul into loving one another and you and you, you thrive in that area people will they everybody wants love and when they see that you have it they're gonna they're gonna want it too verses back and back up just a couple of paragraphs verse 14 if we love our brothers and sisters who are believers it proves that we have passed from death to life Verse 16, here we go. This is what sets it apart. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Well, that, that makes it real realistic. That brings it into the here and now. If you got some, this is talking about your church family. If somebody's in need, you gave a perfect example. We got to have compassion on them, and when you and when you you thrive at that, and people are giving you y'all's y'all's ex pastor gave Becky and I his car. He and Gina, we we barely know him, so I know y'all know this. Alan gave gave us his vehicle, so. That's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. And when, you, when your church lives in that culture of loving one another, and if somebody's down, the whole body comes. I used to give this example. If, if uh, I'm a carpenter, kind of. <laughs> if I hit my thumb with a hammer, first thing I do is, <laughs> it hurts. 
When one of your members is hurting, the whole church goes to their trials to relieve that pain. Isn't that right? Have you, have you been a recipient of that? It's an awesome thing. So that's what we're talking about today. And that is some serious love. So we ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Who did that for us? Jesus did that for us. Not only is this a good idea, this is really not an option. This is a commandment. John 13. Y'all go ahead and turn to John 13. Then that, that may be the, one of the last ones I'll have you turn to. I'm trying to give, get y'all some action in here. John 13, 34 and 35. This is Jesus' farewell. This is a, the Lord's Supper time. and This is his farewell address. And he's, he says to his apostles, verse 34, So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. That's new. No, that's not new. Oh, just as I have loved you, you should love one another. That's a whole other level, isn't it? And then John, in 1 John that we just read, said you ought to be prepared to give up your life for your brothers and sisters in here. Give up your money, and then when you need the money, they'll do the same for you, or, or whatever it is. Build, help build a house. Help build some of those bricks, you know, that you can build a house out of. And then verse 35 says, Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. That's where it is right there. That's where it is, and that's the scripture I'm reading. Our actions. When we love on each other in that way, you can't keep people out. I've heard it said, and I've been... I, most of everything that I preach, I've told from somebody older than me that preached it before, and it just sticks with me, and it has an impact on my life. And, and one, somebody once said, your best outreach a church can possibly have is when your inreach is purring. When, you, when you're hitting on all cylinders, loving on each other and uh, helping each other, sometimes rebuking one another in love, sometimes encouraging each other with a little goad. Y'all know what a goad is? And we'll get a little bit to that later. If I have time, oh, i got to hurry up, Donna Kelsey. Oh, okay. <laughs> but Jesus takes it up a notch. you got to love one another like I have loved you. That's some serious love. People are starved for love. I got ahead of my notes there a little bit. I'm a little bit rusty at this. How many of y'all want to make a difference in the kingdom of God? I, that's the reason I'm standing up here. I had to say yes. I want to make a difference. I'm not dead yet. I'm still breathing air. I want to make a difference in the kingdom of God. I want, I want there to be more people in the heaven... Because of the actions I take here on earth. I want to bear fruit. Do y'all want to bear fruit? Yes. All right. And I know y'all are already doing it and you're good at this. Like I said, we've witnessed it. But let me give you some practical ways to love one another and maybe, maybe improve on it or maybe just something you can go to. I learned this. It's called the love acrostic. Do y'all have that on the screen? This is something that I memorized a long time ago. And if I had more time, if, if Kelsey would have called me before, what, three days ago? Was it? <laughs> no. I, I used to make little cards. And, and uh, what's it called when you put that plastic on them? Laminate. Laminate. Yeah. And laminate them. And this is so valuable. This is something anybody can do. You don't care if you're bedridden. You're in a wheelchair, you're an awkward teenager or a crotchety old man, a sweet lady. Anybody can do these things and, and learn this, and it's just lit something little, but it, it's had a big impact on my life and our family's life. We call it the love acrostic. Every, everybody knows what it is, and it starts with the L stands for listen. 
at the time I first learned this in the 90s, they said, you know, we're getting these bag phones and everybody's, everybody's distracted. And uh, there's so many things happening in the world so fast. And then we come forward 30 years, and I could just say it right out. To listen, you might have to turn off your phone or leave it in the car. I mean, the cell, these, these phones, are, there's a lot of good things we can do with them, but sometimes we've got to turn our phone off. because, And even, oh, now it's not just the young people. It's all of us. You've got to make a point to, if you want to enter into the world of somebody else and love on them, you've got to be able to willing. You've got to be willing to listen to them. It is a lost art form, okay? It requires a certain kind of love. And the Bible calls it, it's agape. The word in, that we're using, the love, word for love, the Greek word is agape love. And it, it, it can be called God's type of love, but it's, it's really a love of choice. You know, I, I didn't have any choice but to love my grandbabies the first time I saw them. That's a love of affection. But agape love is like God with us. He chose to love us. <clears throat> not because of what we have done, but he just loves us. And it requires that to listen to somebody. And here's my favorite verse, one of my first memory verses. And you have to conquer, you have to, you have to embrace this verse if you're going to be able to deny yourself and listen to people. And it's Luke 9, 23. I think they may have that one on the screen. Luke 9, 23. Jesus is talking about and these people, these guys saying, oh, Lord, I want to follow you. I want, I want to, I'll do anything for you, Lord. Then he said to the crowd, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you try to give up your life for my sake, you will save it. Amen. Amen. My version was that I learned it. I think it's New King James. If any man wishes to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Until I'd heard this, until it became my favorite verse, I wasn't really, I wasn't doing that very well. But you have to be able, it's not a... Y'all know y'all heard of Rick Warren, Saddleback Church? You know, he's in a lot of trouble, so he got one thing right. The first line in his book, Purpose Driven Life, it ain't about you. It's not about us. It's about God. It's about God. So I, I would encourage you to memorize this first. And at first when you hear, deny yourself, take up your cross daily, that's kind of ugh. I don't really like the denying myself part or carrying the cross. But when you get this and you begin to live it out in your daily life, it leads to what I truly believe is the ultimate, what, what did Jesus call it? The abundant life. When it's not about you and it's about him and it's about other people, you know the most miserable people on earth are also the most selfish people on earth. The most miserable times of my life is when I was a selfish, when I was, and I can still fall into that. Can I fall into that, Becky? You sh not in a few decades, right? But really, remember that. The most miserable people on, in the world are selfish. The most selfish. And we used to, uh, uh, pastors, we would use movie stars as an example. Now it's everybody. It, it's the culture we live in. So you got to deny yourself. It's like what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9.22. And we don't have time for everybody to turn there. But what did Paul say? I have become all things to all men that by all means I might save some. Or that some might be saved. All things to all men. If Paul didn't go around, if he was a cowboy fan, make people watch. If you'll turn to the Dallas Cowboys... Turn off the Washington Red uh, Commanders. Turn it off. 
If you make my favorite pizza, ah, Paul was the ultimate deny yourself next to Jesus. What all happened to him? Shipwrecked, every bone in his body broke, stoned. He became all things. Why did he do it? So that all, by all means, some might be saved. That's how we're to live our life. Isn't that great? So, if you don't remember anything else, deny yourself. Memorize Luke 9.23. Memorize it. It'll change your life. Okay, I've got three minutes to conclude. Kelsey said, no, keep going. If you, if you have to go get your child in daycare, you, you go, don't even do that, huh? <laughs> okay, I'm going to speed it up. The O stands for overlook. Overlook. Colossians chapter 3. I have all these in order so I can do this really fast. Y'all are all beating me to them. I've even got them marked and highlighted. Col- Colossians 3, 12-14. Since God chose you to be a holy people He loves, you must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Sounds like the fruit of the Spirit, doesn't it? Make allowance for each other's faults. That's what I wanted y'all to hear. We got to overlook, make allowance for each other's faults. Let me finish the verse. And forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. You want perfect harmony in your church? Bind yourself in love. And if everybody does that, oh, look out. Y'all going to be begging me to hire me to come up here and be your associate pastor or something. <laughs> yeah, you're going to need you're going to need three or four ministers here. All right. That's a joke. That is a joke. But some people think it's their spiritual gift to uh, nitpick every little thing wrong with who, other people in the congregation. We got to overlook these little things. Okay? Make a allowance for each other's fault. Genesis 2, 7, what does it say? We're made from the dust of the ground. So if we're all made out of dirt, we can dig up dirt on each other anytime. <laughs> that's it. That's really easy. I'll, that's a good lesson for your marriage, too. Ladies, the men are made out of dirt. Okay? <laughs> the V stands for value. We are made in God's image. The opposite of we're made, we're made by God, but we're made in His image. He can take dirt and make something in His image, okay? So you say, I can't find no value in that sorry rascal. If we're made in God's image, can you find value in somebody? Well, oftentimes we find somebody's spiritual gift before they know they have it. Isn't that neat when that happens? But... The Bible says, I think it's Ephesians 2.10, we are God's masterpiece. Some, of, some Bible translations don't get it quite where that says we are his workmanship, which we are, which anything God makes is a masterpiece. But above all else, a born-again Christian is God's masterpiece. And we can find value in anybody. When we believe in him and receive him, <coughs> that's when we become the masterpiece. And after, whenever you're saved, did you know that God comes and dwells in you? The Holy Spirit dwells within you. When you have the Holy Spirit dwelling within you, you are no longer superior to anyone on earth because you didn't do anything for your salvation, did you? You can't be good enough. Jesus died for our sins. So we're no, we're, you're not superior to anyone on this earth. But guess what else? You're not inferior either. You've got... You've got the Lord God living inside of you. So you can face anything. You can find value in one another. Each one of us have that. And, after, and encourage is the E. And after you've found the value, we can build each other up. Build each other up with encouragement. Not flattery. Tell them the truth about them. Encourage one another. Be a Barnabas. I'm going to get y'all to turn to Hebrews 10. We're about, we're about got it wrapped up, y'all. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. 
I'll give you all time to get there. I like this one. This is encouragement. Y'all know who Barnabas was, was in the Bible? He was the son of encouragement. That was his nickname. If you'll look, if you'll follow Barnabas through the book of Acts, everywhere he went, the church prospered. Good things happened. He was an encourager. And we need to encourage one another because we love each other. Verse 24 says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. The version I learned was, Let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. How many of y'all ever rode a horse? You know, a, a, even a well-trained horse, some places, if you want to take them under a big limb or through an alleyway, they don't want to go, and what do you do? You, you kind of give them a little. You don't hurt somebody or a horse when you spur them, but we get to spur one another on. Sometimes encouragement takes a little bit more like, uh, what it's actually talking about here is a, a shepherd would have a staff, and on the end of it would be a little knob, a little goad, and they would goad the sheep. Sometimes we get to spur one another on. It, it can actually be a lot of fun. <laughs> so you're like, Pastor, the guest speaker said we could do this. And he needed a little nudge. I think maybe Kelsey's pretty good at spurring or nudging. He always has been for me anyway. Let's, let's finish this up. I got time to finish it up, Kelsey? You want me to just quit? Okay. Fourth point. Fourth and last point, love God. It's the first point, it's the last point, it's the middle point, really. You know what the Bible says? I, I, I've searched and searched and searched about loving God. You know what it says? That if we love God, if you want to love God, what do we do? We obey His commandments. It says it over and over and over. You're like, oh, of course we love him for what all he's done for us. And as we live our life out with him, uh, it's like I've been married to my wife for 40 years. This year be our 40th year anniversary. And I love her more now than I ever have. I really do. Y'all know if you, you know what I'm talking about. I've been a born again Christian for 45 years. Beck says, those well, five years, first five, they were a little iffy. <laughs> where, your, where your first five years have been, mine were like, I had the, I had the position with God, I was saved, but it, it's a journey. Over this whole journey, God got me through the death of my parents when they were young. Have y'all had that happen to you? That's hard, isn't it? <clears throat> God got me through it. I always say he just picked me up. I, I uh, officiated the funerals of my mom and dad. He just carried me through it. Three, three or four years later, like, I could never do that ever again. But God, when, when you have a 45-year relationship with Jesus, you grow to love him more and more just from all the experience. And being loved on by people, <coughs> that, that's how you love God. And your love will grow, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to skip those verses because I pretty much gave them to you. Kelsey, I'm going to ask you to come forward as we finish. I'm going to give an invitation. And turning your Bibles to John 1.12. I don't think I have mine marked here. One of my, yeah, I do. It's one of my memory verses too, but my memory ain't quite as good as it used to be. They say you will, when you memorize a verse, you remember it forever. Not me. <laughs> and I really had it memorized. It's somewhere in here. But again, before, before we close... The application, I always like to give you something to take with you. You don't want to come to church and not go back with something, right? Master the art 
of loving one another. Just master the art of it and loving God. If you do, your life's going to be so abundant. And I know a lot of y'all have that already. But if you really focus on it, the church will flourish. Because everybody needs love. That's what the world needs. They want. They see y'all. They see y'all living out and loving on each other and helping each other and fixing each other's cars and keeping each other's kids while you go out on date night. And I'm like, I, w- I want some of that. People want to be loved. The lost will be found. Are y'all interested in that? Oh, yeah. And ultimately, God will be glorified. So master they are to loving. John 1, 12. Another one of my favorite verses. This is talking about Jesus. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Are you a child of God? You know, we sing songs like all the children. I don't, I, can't, I don't know exactly which, which song am I looking for. Jesus loves the little children. A, a true child of God is someone who believes in Jesus Christ, believes that God sent him, he lived a perfect life, He died on the cross for our sins. He was buried, and he rose again on the third day. He hung around with the church for 40 days, and now he sits at the right hand of God in heaven. Do you all believe that? That when it says, I believe in Jesus, but to all who believe him and accepted him. If you believe that, have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted that free gift? We can't. So many times we'll ask, you think, you, you think you're going to go to heaven when you die? And people will say, well, I think I've lived a pretty good life. I, I, I've done more good than I've done bad. We can't be good enough. Jesus was good enough, and he died for our sins. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord, if you've never been saved, Today could be the day of salvation for you. <coughs> I'm going to look at the most famous, what's the most, most famous verse ever? Turn to John 3, 16, or I'll just go there. I'm going to start, I'm going to back up because we got a little bit more time. There was a man named Nicodemus, John 3, verse 1, a Jewish religious leader who was a Pharisee. After dark one evening, he came with to speak with Jesus. He wouldn't do it in the daylight, but he came at night. You know, he was opposition, really, to Jesus. Rabbi, he said, we all know that God has sent you to teach us. Your miraculous signs are evidence that God is with you. So he's coming here, and he's kind of blowing smoke. (laughs) Religious talk to Jesus, and what Jesus just cuts him off. I'll tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean, he said. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of heaven without being born of water and the Spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. And then down in... John 3, 16, this is the, this is the last verse. <clears throat> for this is how we love the world. For this is how God loved the world. He gave his one and only Son that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Some, a lot of y'all have that, don't you? If, you? if you've never done it, this could be your day. I got saved when I was 17. My wife got saved when she was 22. They were telling me about a lady here that her daughter's maybe 40-something, so she got saved maybe when she was 60-something. That's probably here today. A lot of us, you never know when is your day, but today could be your day. So y'all stand and pray with me.
But through all believed in him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that <clears throat> some in here have accepted you as Lord and Savior and some haven't. Lord, I just pray for those today. I, I would ask, I would say, don't wait any longer. What are, you, what are you waiting on? Do you believe? Do you believe in Jesus? Have you accepted his free gift of salvation? If you haven't, I, I invite you to pray with me right now. Dear Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God and are God yourself and that you were sent to this earth to save us, not to condemn us. Lord, I know that I've sinned and I've fallen short and I need you and I believe in you and I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Amen. A lot of times a person will wait till like I've quit I've quit drinking. I've almost quit this. I'm getting cleaned up. When I do, I'm gonna come. <clears throat> It'll never happen. You can't do it without Jesus. If you need Jesus, I invite you to come this morning. <clears throat> I'll talk to you about your salvation. I'm gonna have Becky come up here if you're a lady and like to talk to her. If you need to pray for or with somebody in this building right now, or if you're a person that is sick and, need, and would like for us to pray for you, <clears throat> whatever it is, <clears throat> if you want to come down and kneel down at this altar, I'm inviting you to do so. Kelsey. Sing that out. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. upon your love it is a firm foundation i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around one last time holy there is no one like you there is none beside you open up my eyes in wonder show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me last time we're gonna sing I will build sing it out and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation I will put my trust in you alone and I will God.
God bless you guys. Good to see every face here. Stick around, shake some hands, and then eat something good for lunch. See ya. Be